What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another tutorial video. In this air to ground tutorial, we're going to take a look at a peculiar weapon option for the Hornet, the AGM-62 Walleye. This is what is referred to as a TV guided glide bomb. And you can see it's a big dude right there on my wing. Uh, these suckers weigh about 2,000 pounds each, so they've got the explosive power of roughly a Mark 84. Uh, their primary use uh, was for taking out um, deep-rooted infrastructure, so things like bridges and roadways and things of that nature. Saw heavy use in Vietnam, and uh, like I said, it's a peculiar weapon option for the Hornet because the Hornet sort of came at the end of the lifespan of the Walleye, whereas the Walleye um, really didn't see that much use on the Hornet. Maybe in very early Desert Storm, like I said, the Walleye was a Vietnam era weapon. But that's all for the History Channel. Let's take a look at how we can actually use the walleye on the Hornet. So, as with everything, standard fare, master arm on, air to ground mode, and let's just pause real quickly while looking at our SMS page with the UFC. We have two options here. We have WEDL as well as DL13. I mentioned the walleye is a TV guided bomb, glide bomb of sorts. When I say TV guided, I mean it has an optical TV camera sensor literally on the nose of it. And if I select the walleye here with WEDL and then select again, we're now looking at the TV screen here, the camera that's mounted on the nose of the bomb itself. And if I go sensor select switch to the left to assign the TDC and then I go cage on cage, similarly to the Maverick, I can slew the seeker head around. Now I'm looking at water right now so it's a little difficult to see, but let's see if I can find some land over here. That's all right. We'll find some land in a minute. And we can deselect it and reselect it, and it will cage itself. We have some fusing options, uh, instantaneous and delay, only one version of delay. And we can step through our stations. We can only carry the walleye on station 2 and station 8. So if I unpause and look, that's on the outer wing pylon. These bombs are so big, we can only carry two of them at a time. All right. Let's find a target if we can and see if we can't drop the walleye. Uh, I've got my favorite target range over there, the palm on the Persian Gulf. And let's see if we can't find something. Do note on the HUD, we do have sort of a seeker HUD symbology here. Uh, this uh, dashed circle with a dot in the middle currently overlaying my path vector. And we have WE for walleye crossed out. When we do get a valid lock, we will see the cross over WE walleye disappear. But uh, that is the only indication we're going to get that the walleye has locked on. So do bear that in mind. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of visual feedback to know you've achieved a valid lock. You kind of have to be aware of what the symbology is doing. So let's unpause and go this way just a little bit. And I think to make it easy, I'm going to go back into active pause here. And I'm going to uncage the walleye. I'll zoom in and look at the TV screen here. Slew it down. There is no zooming options of the walleye, so you do have to be very, very precise with where you're targeting it. And it's pretty, it's, it's cumbersome, I would describe it, to actually try to get a valid contrast lock. So uh, I'm looking at the wrong targets there. All right, here we go. 
Similarly to with the Mavericks, to actually slew it around, you have to press and hold TDC depress. So, like I said, it's just adding to the cumbersomeness of this weapon. And let's come out of active pause, because I need to get a little bit closer, because the walleye cannot actually see those targets. There we go. All right, quick pause. The walleye seeker head snapped to those targets. They're very hard to see in that screen, but you can just make them out. And on the HUD, the crossover walleye has disappeared. So what we're going to do is we can unpause and release the bomb and we can see what it does. So this is technically a pigs away call since this is a glide bomb. And there it goes. I need to get myself into a barometric altitude hold because this bomb is very heavy and it makes keeping the aircraft stable pretty difficult. But let's follow it in. Now I mentioned this is technically a glide bomb, so you can get some decent range out of this, but it is a little bit tricky. That propeller looking thing you see on the back is actually a wind generator that uh, generates power for the TV camera guidance system as well as the control surfaces. But it is gliding towards the target and it's gliding at a pretty shallow angle, so it'll get there as we follow it in. It should create a nice big boom. Kaboom, and like I said, it's pretty powerful this weapon it's got a lot of explosive power in fact that took out more than just the one little splash damage there very nice all right so that's the basics of the walleye we do have one other way to employ the walleye i mentioned we have a data link pod that can actually link up to the walleye in flight and we can follow its tv camera all the way down to the target how we do that, let's first unselect the walleye here. Let's take a look at our stores management page. And we see DL13, this is the data link pod designed for the walleye. If we select it, notice we have basically a fuzzy TV screen here. If we then select the walleye itself, the walleye is ready. However, we still see nothing but fuzz. The reason for that is because the data link pod is tuned to the wrong station. We dropped a bomb off of station number eight. We need to actually retune it to station number two. Notice this channel selector here with the UFC. If we select that channel and then two, enter. We're now looking at the walleye's TV screen through the data link. Notice how it's a little bit fuzzy because it's coming through as a radio signal similarly to a television broadcast of the 70s. What this enables us to do is when we drop the walleye, we can then follow the walleye's TV view all the way down to impact. Let's see if we can line up and get a target that we can do that with. Also notice that with the walleye through the data link pod, the walleye is available for launch at any point. Also through the data link pod, we can steer the bomb with our TDC while it's in flight. And that's probably the coolest part about the walleye is you can steer it after you launch it. So with that said, let's try to find another target to blast. My plane is somewhat difficult to control right now because I have so much weight on that wing as compared to that wing. As before, we can slew the walleye around with our TDC and TDC depress. Now, using the data link, we don't need to get a perfectly valid contrast lock right away. What we can do is we can launch the bomb and get a valid contrast lock afterward. So let me get myself into a barometric altitude hold here. go get her nice and level aim the bomb down 
And we can launch this guy right now. All right. The bomb is currently in flight. And notice I am still viewing the screen here. In fact, I can pause my camera right there and we can follow this bomb all the way down. I am currently flying this bomb with my finger joystick TDC. And we're going to follow it all the way down until impact. This enables us to make small corrections in its flight and it enables us to get more range out of this. With its own seeker head, your range is limited to what the seeker head can see, but if you know roughly where the target is, you can use the data link pod to guide it all the way down. And it's found of contrast lock, so it's going to zoom in on that. I could actually change it if I wanted to, to one of these other targets here. Come on. All right, it's got that one. Let's let that fly all the way in. Flying towards it, flying towards it. And boom. We just watched that bomb fly all the way from our plane down through its own seeker head, which is pretty cool and is probably the coolest part about the walleye. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, the walleye, like I said, it's a peculiar weapon. It's an interesting weapon. It's pretty fun to use, but it's also somewhat difficult to use in uh, realistic scenarios, especially in more modern scenarios. Um, but it is somewhat useful, and uh, like I said, mostly it's fun and interesting to use. So get out there, give it a try, and see what you can do with it. Um, I've actually managed to take out an SA-10 with it myself, but uh, I'm not one to brag. Or maybe I am. Never mind. I'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.